Welcome back everybody. I'm Robert Rodriguez and you're watching The California Hunter. Welcome back everybody. Happy belated 4th of July. I hope everybody had a safe, good time. We're shooting remotely this week. As you can see in the background, completely different, but wanted to bring you guys some content and try to get you something going every week. That's what we're working here for. And so uh, join me as we get into this next video. So in 2016, I went to Alaska for a black bear hunt on the Kenai Peninsula. Hunted an area called the Powerline Pass with my friend Grant. So I'm gonna give you the play-by-play -play of what actually happened. So we get to our hunting area. That's it's a, basically a dirt road off of the main highway. We get off this dirt road, go down a ways, have our kind of a flat area where we set up base camp, set up our tent, get everything going. And then we start setting up our packs. I didn't know that Grant had gotten two five gallon buckets filled with fish fryer grease oil and donut grease oil and it packed them into a couple of packs well my first time walking in snowshoes we're hiking these in to the bear bait up on powerline pass and it was very awkward walking in snowshoes for the first time it's like walking with flippers on and uh i ended up eating it i ended up falling on the ground face first into the snow and <laughs> the, the bag that I was carrying and the five gallon bucket that was in it ruptured and started pouring grease down the back of my neck. It was terrible. Probably the one of the worst like first five minute hunting experiences ever. In the first five minutes of just getting going, I'm covered in grease. It was terrible. So I get stood back up, try to clean myself off. We make it to the bait, unload the packs, dump all the oil out of the one that uh, leaked all over me get up into the tree stand still like covered in oil it was terrible and uh proceed to sit there for a few hours waiting for a bear to come in we had one bear come in unfortunately it kind of came in from behind and we saw it underneath our tree stand and he was kind of hanging out for a minute and i think he scented us turn out turn around and and went running back the way he came from ended up being the only bear that we saw at that bait that day came back the next day hunted the bait again i think i had a pretty long sit that day i want to say maybe around like eight hours uh in the tree stand and uh no luck so for the amount of time that i had sat at powerline pass on that tree stand and not seen enough bears come through we decided to make a move and a shift in our plans um we ended up leaving that site wrapping up base camp went and contacted a friend of a friend we were able to get a hold of a canoe took that canoe along with our tent and we went up to Cooper Landing, Cooper Lake, and set up the tent. It was actually kind of awesome. We were all, the only ones on the lake that, that period that we were there, that time that we were there. Um, got up, set up our tent that first evening, got the, the um, canoe launched out into the lake and we went ahead and did a quick lap just to do like a survey lap to see what we were gonna kind of try to pinpoint or maybe focus our attention on the next day. Uh, and I do have to say it was absolutely gorgeous. The scenery, the clarity of the lake, as far as reflection, I mean, no wind, no waves, no ripples. It was like we were on a mirror and it was reflecting the mountains and the setting sun just so beautifully. Hands down, one of the most, I would say, beautiful sceneries that I've been on for hunting. It was just, it was very nice. It was very, it's hard to describe for me. I guess it's, it was just very beautiful. It's one of those things that I just don't think you can replicate. So we did a lap, kind of got our bearings, figured out what we wanted to do. Next morning, got up and started working the lake uh, on the edges. Our plan was to spot and stock. So we would use the canoe to circle the lake, get around to areas that aren't normally accessed by people. And then if we would spot a bear from the boat, we can beach the boat and then make a play on that bear uh, from the ground, you know, down low and, uh, and take it from there. That was our initial plan. We ended up circling the lake <clears throat> and I would say probably sometime in the afternoon, we spotted a black bear. Unfortunately, it was a sow black bear with two cubs. 
we weren't able to, to uh, make a play on it. But I did have a successful spot and stock hunt from a boat. Click this link right here to watch the video. I had a great time on this hunt. It wouldn't be considered a successful hunt in many uh, circles just because we didn't get a bear. But for me personally, hunting is hunting and I had a great time. I love to hunt. Just because you hunt doesn't always mean you're gonna come away with an animal, uh, but it, you will come away with memories and you will come away with things that you learn. All right, so we wanna do a little teachable moment here, do's and don'ts from this hunt. So the first thing, you wanna be flexible. In this particular hunt, we went from and had an idea of being in a stand with a bear bait, and our plan was to do that, and it just didn't work out. We weren't seeing what we wanted to see, thought we'd have better luck, and we completely transitioned to a different style of hunting, a different area. We were on water with the boat. So be flexible. Sometimes things need to change, and if you have the ability to change them, uh, and you think it might be a good play, do it. Second, if you're broke, have a friend with some toys. A friend that's got a canoe, a truck, a big tent, a heater. Those are great friends to have. Just keep in mind though, if they're the ones bringing all the gear, you're the Sherpa. You're the one packing everything. You're the one moving everything. You're the one setting everything up and tearing it down because that's your job because you're broke. And C, if you're gonna use snowshoes for the first time or any gear, practice before you get into the field to make a fool of yourself. Don't, number one, don't hike with a pack full of grease. If you fall, it's gonna fall all over you, just like it did me. Two, wait, did I say first or two? B, do not let your friend have a camera because he will take pictures of you while you're stuck on all fours and there's grease running out of your pack down your back. Don't let him have a phone. Uh, I don't think of anything else. I can't think of anything else. So that's my do's and don'ts list. Thank you for joining me today. Like and subscribe, tune in for the next video. Drop a comment if there's something you want us to cover or go over, we would be happy to do it. Until next time, anyone can hunt.